Hey everyone, it's Aaron from Push Square. So today I've been thinking a lot about the various features that are available through the PlayStation 5 and not the typical things like the haptic feedback or the super fast loading times. It's the small little things that have been introduced or continued over with this console that just amplify the entire experience. So I was thinking about this because I covered the new software beta this week and you can check that video out if you're keen to know what else is coming to the PS5, but that had me considering what I didn't know about the PS5. The things that it could do that I just never considered, because to be honest I never really looked into those things all that much. So since then I've been doing a little digging and I've accrued myself a list of features that I don't think are immediately obvious. Now some of these you may already know, but some might be a bit of a surprise. Regardless though, all of them aim to streamline the entire PlayStation 5 experience. So with that said, I thought I would throw together a wee video on the top 20 PS5 tips and tricks you wish you knew sooner. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to break everything up into categories which cover controller, quick access and what I like to call the make your life easier section. So we're going to start off with the controller because obviously it's the first thing you interact with whenever you start your latest gaming session. So the trigger, vibration and brightness settings on the DualSense controller can all be lowered or completely turned off to prolong battery life. Now we all know how terrible the battery on these things can be so this could be quite useful. Head over to the settings, then accessories and you'll spot a suite of settings that can all be altered, turning them up, turning them down a little or completely turning them off. However, if you're like me and you just love the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers and you think it's worth a bit of a shorter battery life, then know that if you have the built-in mic or speaker on, it will automatically reduce the strength of those features, so you might want to turn that one off. The mic itself though can actually be a bit of a nuisance. While well, you can turn it off or mute yourself via the button on the controller, a better solution is actually available if you go into settings, sound, microphone and then change the microphone status when logged in to mute. This will now automatically mute your microphone whenever you log in so there's no accidental singing to lobbies full of horrified listeners. An incredibly handy little tip concerning the mic button is that if you hold it down for just half a second rather than tapping it, it will actually mute all audio, including your television speakers and any party audio. And you can just press it again to unmute everything as well. So to actually save you a little bit extra battery on that controller, there's a setting that will allow you to change the dormant time before the controller will turn off entirely. If you go to settings and then power saving options, you'll find that you can change it between 10, 30 and 60 minutes. However, if you hold the home button for just 10 seconds, that will also turn off the controller without the need to select icons in the menu. Ok, over to some of the quick access options now. If you hold the home button, you will be taken back to the home page. Now that seems incredibly obvious and I am so so annoyed at myself that I did not know this before. But of course, the basic way if you just tap the controller, it will take you to the control bar. But this way, just hold it for like the tiniest little bit longer and you go straight back to the dashboard. Yeah, it's going to save you a bunch of time. I'm incredibly annoyed I didn't know this. Now, we all love to take great pictures on PlayStation 5, so you want to make it as easy and streamlined an experience as possible. If you head into captures and broadcasts, captures, then shortcuts for the create button, you can change the settings to easy screenshots, which allows you to just one tap the create button to take a shot rather than having to hold it. Streamline this experience even further by turning off the display save confirmation for screenshots, meaning you don't have to wait for the little notification icon to go away in the top right corner before taking another shot. And let's just take that one step even further. If you stay in the capture settings and you turn on the auto upload and sign into the PlayStation app on your phone, you'll now be able to access all of your screenshots and your videos from the PlayStation app, download them straight onto your phone and share them or use them however you like. A nice and easy one up next, if you're on the home page or the PlayStation store, pressing triangle and then X, you're going to be quickly typing into the search bar, bypassing the need to navigate to it with the D-pad, so it means you can be looking up games in your library or games that you want to buy at the push of a button. 
A widely bypassed feature that you really shouldn't forget about are activity cards, which can actually take you straight into a specific task within a game. This isn't available for every game, it's mainly reserved for PS5 games, but again, that's not every PlayStation 5 game, so it's a case by case basis but it will actually skip through the menus and all of that for you and take you right into the action. It's a feature that I've largely ignored, but looking at this, I think it could be a massive time saver if used correctly. And lastly, for those multitaskers out there, when playing a game, you can double tap the home button to access activity cards, trophy trackers, or even access your party if you're in one. You can then even pin the features to the side, so if you're super forgetful like me as you go trophy hunting, you can just stick them on the side and play away and refer to them whenever you need. Now we're on to the make your life easier section. These are all of the little features that just improve the experience of the PlayStation overall. And first up, we have the ability to log in as busy or offline. We've all been there. You just want a quiet private gaming session and you know you have friends online that are going to bombard you with invites. So before you do that, before you log in, press the options button and then simply select busy or offline and that will save you having to log in and then change it. This will either hide your login or block any incoming invites, letting other players know that you just want to get on with it yourself. Next up, you're going to want to turn off that home music. Yes, I know, it's supposed to be all relaxing, but after a while, it will drive you insane. So what you want to do is log in, go to settings, sound, audio output, and scroll down where you'll find the option to turn it off. Ah, blissful silence. The control center is a really important part of the PlayStation 5, so you want to fine tune it the best you can. Open it up, hover over one of the icons, press the options button, and now you can switch around or hide the icons in whichever manner you see fit. There are only select icons that can actually be used, but it can make the ones you do regularly use a lot more accessible. Speaking of accessibility, if you're anything like me and you play a bunch of different games, maybe you've just picked up the new PS Plus, you'll have a constantly shifting homepage. So you can take your favourite and pin it to that homepage so it's always there and easily ready to play. You'll have to open the game to bump it back onto the dashboard, but once it's there, hover over it, press the options button and turn on the keep in home option. It's now going to be there at all times no matter how many different games you play. Another one I didn't actually realise was that if you have your Spotify synced up with your PlayStation, you can actually continue playing the music through the PlayStation while you play the game. And it's just perfect for those grindy or more chilled out gaming sessions. So the next couple are all about saving that money. And we all know how expensive games can be right now. A basic AAA Sony game is going for like £70 these days. So ensuring you get them on sales can be paramount. Well, with the wish list option, which I've been aware of before on the PlayStation 4, but I never actually used, you can actually be notified when a game you've wishlisted goes on sale. They'll also be available to view on a list which then will just show which ones currently have discounts on at any given time. All you have to do is go onto the game page on the PlayStation Store, select wishlist and you'll be notified as soon as it's discounted. So the second part to that money saver, we have console sharing which was also available on the PlayStation 4. This is a feature that allows you to dip in and out of two accounts, sharing each other's libraries and this even extends to the new PS Plus so if only one of you owns premium or extra then the other can get access to all of the downloadable games. Just sign in to your PS5 with your friend's account and then with that account signed in, head to settings, users and accounts, console sharing and offline play and enable it on your console. Then all you need to do is sign in with your friend's account, download one of their games accessible via their games collection, sign back into your account and it will be available. And for our final tip, we have the PlayStation app, which actually received a fresh update not too long ago, so it's looking and running a lot better now. Here you can access your captures, as we mentioned, check who's online, message some friends, join parties, but most usefully, you can actually purchase and download the games from the app. And with the size of some of these games and the download times that you're getting, this just means that if you are out and about, you can ensure that a game's ready to play as soon as you get back home. So those are all of my tips and tricks that I wish I knew a lot, lot sooner. So let me know down below any of the tips you think I missed out here today. Please include them. I'm really keen to learn all I can about this console. 
And remember, if you're on the lookout for more PlayStation content across YouTube, covering news, reviews, deep dives, gameplays, tips and more, you don't need to look any further than Push Square. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.